Hello, people, and welcome to another episode of the Tony and Tony Show, the show where we cover all new content published on Redgate's product learning. My name is Kent, but you don't really care about that. So let's switch to Tony and Tony in that specific order. And Tony, do you copy? Yes, Kent. This is Tony here. And on the other side, there's also Tony. It's Tony 2. Tony 2. Yeah. Uh, and Tony 1 or 3. Uh, that doesn't yeah. matter. We get That's to so ourselves. The, the three Tonys. Well, that would be funny. <laughs> but uh, we're just the two of us. Three there's Tonys new... would be a crowd. Yeah, Sorry. it would be a crowd. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Forks in Flyway database development work. It's it's a new article. Uh, it is a new article. Um, it's a fill one. It is a fill factor article. Okay. It is about the idea that, um, well, fundamentally, it's about uh, in team based development with Flyway. Mm -hmm. it, it, to scale it, you've got to allow the developers, you, you've got to deploy often and small. And it means mm -hmm. you, you've got to allow developers to break tasks into, you know, break a development into small tasks and to be able to work on them independently in, in forks or branches. So you've got to be able to create forks of your main development effort to allow developers to work in parallel on the most important tasks you need to achieve on that sprint and to test, and them, test them effectively in isolation and then merge them back in. And by uh, the terminology you're using, my first assumption is Git, but it's not about Git. It's about uh, the concept, the concept of, of forking, the concept of branching yes. and leveraging techniques. And in Flyway. That are already in there. They're already in there. You might not know. See, a lot of people stick with trunk-based development because they, they're not quite sure how to support forking and branching in Flyway projects. And you can do it, but it does tend to lead to complications in Flyway. So you start skipping migrations and running migrations out of order. And it, it, do you know what I mean? You'll find yourself doing those things. I mean, and they're legitimate Flyway features as well. But um, this, this article kind of comes from the point of view, keep your migration simple, version X to version Y. Um, and not only simple, but keep your keep your migrations separated because yes, one of the things in the uh, article is about specifying more than one location for your migration files. Exactly. So what yeah. the first technique he, he he talks about for um supporting forking is just the idea you can specify multiple relative locations. So in this case, you're you're, you're forking the main development effort, which is folder A, to to a, a essentially a feature branch and a release branch. Mm. And you can rather, you don't have to, you know, you're not copying stuff around here. You just say to Flyway, look in folder B and in folder A for the migrations you need for this project. So you'll have mm. your branch specific mig mig migrations that you'll be adding to B and testing and making sure it all works. But, when you're... but, but Tony, let yes. me stop you here because Articles of fill, we're used to a lot of code examples, but this one links to other articles with code, but this one is really just getting the concept in your head. Yeah. It's, how, it's, how Phil wants to uh, advocate it. Yeah, exactly right. It's a different, it's a different, so I've only really mentioned the main use case for forks, which is to, to get discrete um, development tasks developers working in parallel, but there's also quite common and, and does it, it makes flyway de deployments slightly more complicated is the idea that um, you're trying, you have to deploy the same changes to multiple production environments that are subtly different. Hmm. So, so that's the other case for forking really. Um, he, he suggests th this is a very, again, this shows a kind of physical form of branching, but the idea here is you can maintain special production, so it's maybe there's special production code that just has no place in um, development. Ah, so you can separate. You, so sep you, yeah. you run them as separate projects. Mm. So in this case, it's just it's just deploying the production only stuff from from a, a, a project that only controls a, a schema called util. You won't deploy to anything else. So it's that, it's that ability to assign flyway to schemas. And all your main developer object, you know, development object 
your main op, user objects are in mm. are controlled by a different project, and that's what that's where your your from which you'll deploy your main migrations. So, so there's another way to kind of split apart, you know, to maintain these kind of different strands of this. In this case, you know, variations of a production database. It is this. it is all all together. Some to sum it up, a complex article because it it are complex uh, subjects. So um, I think for now, the time is up. So yeah. So baseline migrations is the first third technique he covers, and that just simplifies uh, forking in Flyway. Because you don't need to refer to the the parent migrations anymore because you've captured them all in a baseline. So that's almost the simplest part of it. Hmm. So that might have a use case for that as well. Let me. But for now, yes, I hear Kent in my headphone. He wants us back in the studio. So it's a good uh, for... article review. Just want to see the all just to understand how Flyway can support forking and see which one might work for you. It's a stretch. Almost a strategic article, really. Yeah, the, the link is up here. Yep. We have this fancy Redgate short term link. Thanks, uh, Fergus. Um, go check it out. And till next time. Till next time. Thank you, Tony or Tony. Um, well, at least one of your feels appreciated, right? That's it for today's episode. As you all know, my name is not Tony, but Kent. I hope to see you soon for another episode of the T2 Show where Tony squared equals exponential learning.